Good biblical morning. Yeah, I just realized um, I don't have my bumper, my promo video, the intro the song, the loop. Um, Thursday night, we lost all, all my broadcasting stuff. It crashed. Um, that's why things look a little different today because it's kind of a throw together thing until we are done kings and then i need to get the computer fixed but we're, <coughs> but we're here we're live on facebook with you our forever family we're here we're live on tiktok with you our forever family bible read along family and welcome to the bible study today we are looking at second kings chapter 23 second kings chapter 23 and so grab grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab a highlighter, read along with us. We would love for you to join in. If you don't have it, the words will still be on the screen on Facebook, um, as well as other... Uh, let me see if I can add the bumper video in here. Bumper. I didn't even think about that one. Add media source. We'll play it at the end, but bumper video um but yeah welcome welcome back it was a long weekend we took a day off i don't even have the uh i can see the comments on facebook i can't add them um so we will let's do this sorry guys i just not ready desktop bible read along bumper bumper Add that in. All right. Um, and Ashley will be here. My name's Daniel. If we haven't met, hello. Uh, please say hi in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from, whether you're on TikTok, Facebook, whatever. Um, and I'm here. My wife's just finishing up some things. And she will be... She's making my lunch. That's what she's doing. She's a good woman. She's making my lunch right now. Um so but we're gonna dive in we're gonna pray and dive in i again i apologize on tiktok you won't notice because everything looks the same on tiktok on facebook things look different and it's it's uh yeah it's just a different thing right now i'm gonna take this down we had this up for the prayer course we did the prayer course over the weekend three times had 25 people about that go through the prayer course and so if you were part of that so good to have you there i hope you've enjoyed it learned something on facebook i see matthew colonna british columbia lynn in edmonton alberta welcome i enjoyed the acts of prayer course you didn't on the weekend it was very powerful i loved it very much god spoke to my heart in a powerful way so awesome to hear matthew shelby wilson powell welcome back mike markey from pinocchio alberta welcome valentina from california welcome so glad to have you guys. I see a couple people here on TikTok this morning. Someone named Travelbug. Welcome. I see some other people here as well. Welcome. Say hello. We'd love to know where you're from. Let's dive in. Let's pray and then dive into the word of God. So, Father, we exalt you. We love you. We worship you. God, we just thank you for today. Thank you for my wife. Oh, yeah. Lord, bless bless this home. Bless everyone listening. We pray over their homes, their families, that this just be a time of connecting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are we now still live? $10 a month pod is really working so good. <laughs> I think we're, I think I have the, yeah, every, we lost everything. So if audio's not working right or video, please let us know right away in the comments. Um, because on Facebook, it's just not working. And so we're going to finish Kings. We are almost done Kings. We're going to finish second Kings. And then I'm going to be taking my computer in to get it fixed and cleaned up and ready to go. Hopefully for this next season. Um, so we'll, we'll keep you posted on what that means for dates and times. We're also going to try something today. Can you jump on me yeah. and do the tag? Yeah. We've discovered something on Facebook. They now have, 
Oh, I'll tell them. This is a good... Just so you know, there's... Because we don't want you to get annoyed. But there is a tag everyone feature on Facebook. So if all of a sudden you're getting a notification, Daniel tagged you, Ashley tagged you, we're actually just tagging everyone. And it doesn't show your name. It doesn't... It just tags everyone in the group. And we are doing that to hopefully get people connecting with... Um, I'm on TikTok, Christopher. Is it not working? Everyone is not showing up. Oh, you can't do it in a live? So we'll have to do it after. Um, okay, we'll find out. We're learning. Um, yeah, let's dive in because this is kind of messy today. And I just, I feel bad for how messy this is. But I wanted to let you know, we're having some real tech computer. You did it in the live? Perfect. Let's see what happens here. Yep. Um, we're going to just see what happens. But welcome. Let's dive in to the Word of God. Second, um, Christopher, I'm interested that you can't find me on TikTok because I am live on TikTok. Hold on. I'll go and see if I can try and share it. I think we're friends on TikTok. But I don't know what's happening. Yeah. We're going to try and get things fixed. My wife says it's there. Did you unfriend me? Did you block me, Christopher? Just kidding. There he is. Oh, so what's his name? There he is. All right. Second Kings. So the cycle of kings. Let's go now. It's go time. Um, if you're ready, you know what to do. Type in the comments. Say, I'm ready for the word of God. I'm ready. Type it in. And we are at 32 viewers. So whatever you just did with top everyone, it just tripled what we normally get. Um... Second Kings, so the cycle of kings, same as Judges, when we went through Judges, it shows the godliness, and there's favor, and people are blessed, and then it shows disobedience, and there's consequences. And so this has been the cycle. We've left off with Josiah, Josiah the king, young king. He was made king at eight years old. He served the Lord, and then while they were cleaning the temple, they found these books, and he goes, man, we've been serving God, but we have to fix things. We got to make things right, and that's where we are at right now. Second Kings chapter 23. Good morning, Betty. Welcome, new people. If you're just joining us for the first time, we, we tagged you because we go live every day. Every weekday. And Facebook, show Facebook has not been showing it. It doesn't do it. We are finding there's been people in the Bible read-along group for sometimes two years and have never seen one of our videos. So we've tagged you today to come check it out. If you got time right now, join us. Watch it with us. If you don't, watch it another time. But we just want to make you aware of what we are doing. Um Yes, Karina, everything gets thrown off when a week starts on a Tuesday instead of the Monday. Yeah. Um, we are on 2 Kings chapter 23. Here we go. Josiah renews the covenant. Then the king, Josiah, called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem, and he went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah. The inhabitants of Jerusalem the priests, the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He, he, he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. He read all the books, all the words from the book of the covenant found in the temple. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord. He renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all of his heart, with all of his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in the book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. I love this because often I'll hear Christians, well, I've already I've repented. I've been saved. Should I do it again? And let me say this. It doesn't change your salvation. You're already saved. If you have confessed Jesus as Lord, if you believe he died and rose again, and you say, I believe this out loud, I'm confessing, and then you choose to commit your life to him, you're saved. You are saved. But I'll tell you, for me personally, every time my pastor does a, does a prayer at the church, I pray. 
and I pray with my heart. Lord, I recommit, I realign, I reassess, reevaluate, and I bring my life back into alignment with your promise, your ways, your kingdom. This is what Israel is doing at this time the of Judah. Um, they are coming back and saying, we're coming back. All of them, the least to the greatest. I love that. Verse 4, 2 Kings 23, verse 4. The king ordered Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest next in rank, and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple all of the, the Lord... I want to read this right. Remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made for Baal and Asherah and all the starry hosts. Anything that's not of God, get it out of the church. Get it out of the temple. We're cleaning house here. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the king of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem. Those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the constellations, to all of the starry hosts, he took the Asherah pole from the temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside of Jerusalem and burned it there. He ground it to powder and scattered the dust over the graves of the common people. He also tore down the quarters of the the male shrine prostitutes that were in the temple of the Lord, the quarters where women did weaving for Asherah. So we see, we've seen this with kings throughout the book of Kings. We have seen people come in and say they obeyed the Lord, but they didn't clean up the high places and the places of worship. And then, so Josiah, it was known of him that he was pleasing the Lord. He was doing what the Lord had said, but he's taking this a step further and just saying, we are cleaning house. It is time to make a change. Time to tear down all the high places. And we see, we keep seeing these idols and this worship to the stars and the moon and the, the constellations because Israel got distracted with other things and then they begin to worship other things, the things created instead of the creator. And so what is Josiah doing? He's turning Israel back to God. Not just his creation, not false gods, not false systems. We are turning back to God. And I want to just say that maybe some of you are doing this in your own life. And let me suggest it starts there. This actually happened. This is historical. However, the application for us is going, is my temple clean? Is my house clean? So before you start marching into your church and saying, this is wrong and that's wrong and we're tearing that poster down because I think it's demonic and this and that and that is not your place to do that. Go talk to leaders, work it out. This is the king. He has the authority and the position to do this. So Matthew, what Matthew is that? If you have sinned against your brother or sister, first go. Go to them. Reconciled. Yeah, Matthew 18. 18. Matthew 18. And we go, there's a system of, of healing that God has. Sorry. And no, and that's right. And that's, there's a, there's a proper order in doing this. So just because God stirred something in your heart doesn't mean you suddenly march into the church. And we've, I, I've been parts of churches like this. I've seen this. People come in, even guest speakers come in and we'll talk about how horrible this is that we have pick your poison, whatever it is in the church. Oh, there's, there is, um, yeah, and some of it's so dumb. Can I just say some of it is so dumb? You know, come into church and, oh no, there's a smoke machine. That must mean you're not actually serving God because smoke machines are not. Are people getting saved? Are people being discipled? Are they empowering them to reach the world? Then the smoke machine doesn't matter. I first loved church because of the our, our band. Ashley smoke machine. I'm over that, but yeah, <laughs> it was like a party. Yeah. Ashley said part of why she first came to church and liked our church was because of loud music, lights, smoke machine. And she's been changed. You would look back on your life in five, five years, you know, and has it been five years now um, that you've been walking with the Lord five years, you know, and she can look back and go, 
my life has drastically changed because of the Lord and his people. And so sometimes people come in. Now, there are things that are actually idols and things that need to be removed, need to be cleaned. But again, let's focus on our temple. What's in my life? Am I putting things above God? And maybe I don't have a idol made. Um, I don't have, I was just thinking, I took my son to the zoo yesterday here. We drove an hour and a half, went to the zoo for the day, drove home. There, in one of the areas of Asia, they got this big elephant god thing, whatever it is. I don't know, I don't know the Hindu feet. What is it called? I forget. Um, I, from the Hindi, Hindi faith, I believe. Um, and so, you know, my son's like, well, what is this? And he's, he hasn't been in church a lot lately. But he's going, well, what is this? Why is this? Why does this elephant have feet of man? Why does he have this? Why does he? And I said, well, some people actually believe that's a God and they worship it. And he goes, what? And he couldn't believe it. I'm not saying you may not have actual idols in your home, in your life, but what is your idol? What is the thing you're giving your time to, your energy to, your gifts to? Is it, is it your bank account? Are you looking and, oh, the bank account, oh, the money, the numbers, oh, the, I work harder, make more, save more, do more. And anyways, you guys, I think you get what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. So I'm going to keep moving on. I am trying to keep track of comments, by the way. I do watch them all at the end. Lots of comments today because we got lots of new people. Um, so if there is anything major, please just tell me, hun. Um, Yes, Matthew 5. Oh, it is Matthew 5. Good call. That's what it reminded me of, though. It is Matthew 5. Yeah, you were right. The word, the verse from CR. If you're offering your gift at the altar and therefore remember, that's right. Then Matthew. You have sinned, you have sinned against your brother. Yeah, and Matthew 18 talks about if someone has sinned against you, go to them first, then go with others, then go to leadership, then go to the church. Um Great verses, guys. Great <laughs> verses. The other one? Take the speck out of your own eye. Take the speck out of your own eye. Then you can rightly judge. That's a whole other topic. Let's keep going here with 2 Kings 23. Josiah is cleaning house, cleaning it up. We're at verse 8. 2 Kings 23, verse 8. Josiah brought all the priests from the towns of Judah and, desec and desecrated the high places from Geba to Beersheba, where the priests had burned incense, he broke down the gateway at the entrance of the gate of Joshua. The city governor, which was one, which was on the left of the city gate, although the priests of the high places did not serve at the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, they ate unleavened bread with their fellow priests. In other words, they're just doing things that are not right at that time. He desecrated top, top, Top Topheth, sure, which was in the valley of Ben Hinnon. So no one could use it to sacrifice their sons or their daughters in the fire of Mel Moloch. He removed from the entrance to the temple of the Lord the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were in the court. Little context button. Um, the, the meaning of this Hebrew word is uncertain. Okay, they were in the court near the room of an official named Nathan Melech. Josiah then burned the chariots dedicated to the sun. Josiah's just cleaning house, cleaning up. Verse 12, he pulled down the altars the kings of Judah had erected on the roof near the upper room of Ahaz and the altars Manasseh had built in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He removed them from there, smashed them to pieces, threw the rubble into the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem on the south of the hill of corruption, the one Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Ashtaroth, the vile goddess of the Sidonians. And some of you might be going, Solomon, yes, Solomon built the temple, worshipped the Lord, began to marry many, 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 many women, 
and they brought in false gods. And to please them, we, we've read this already in First Kings. You can go back and read it. Um, to please them, he began to build altars and temples to their gods. This was wrong. This was also what it was in this defining moment that changed the whole history of Israel. The, the consequences was it divided into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. We see the cycle of kings that are not obeying the Lord. We see war. We see civil war. We see issues. All of these things was because Solomon originally allowed these things in. And so when Josiah's... Oh, how rude. When Josiah is cleaning this up, this is not just a throwback. Remember when what they are actually saying is from the time of Solomon through all of the 20 kings that we've gone through, there's still been, this has never been fully dealt with. Mm -hmm. This is, there's always temptation. There is always temptation, but there's also just the, <laughs> the practice of this, you know? And so some of what could this mean? Well, let's talk. Oh, did we lose Facebook? I think we can still hear you. Yeah. We lost video though. It might it's come back. Um, like freezing. yeah, Facebook, I think we can still hear you. we're going to fix computers and stuff next week. I'm hoping that yeah. helps make some differences. Um, what could this mean in recovery? We see this, it, there might be things in your life that have been generational. Now I want to be clear here. I do not believe in, in generational curses. I don't believe your family is cursed. But I believe that you are susceptible to certain things, um, such as alcoholism or drugs or anger or control or um, poverty, the mindset of poverty and lack. There's things that continue through generations. And we have to actually go, enough is enough. It's time to clean house and yes if you're on facebook and you want to see good clear video but no scriptures come to tiktok come join us on tiktok um and there may be things in your house that you have to go it's enough is enough time to clean this but my mom was like this my my, my grandma my my dad my grandpa my what every this has been continued i've seen this generation after generation but no enough so did all these kings so did all these kings. And We're Josiah finally said, curse. this is enough. We're doing things different. We are doing things different. We're doing things God's way. Let's keep going here. Um, verse... I think we're in 13. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem on the south hill of corruption. The one Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Asheroth, the vile goddess of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the vile god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the people of Ammon. Josiah smashed the sacred stones, cut down the Asherah poles, and covered the sites with human bones. Verse 15, 2 Kings 23, verse 15. Even the altar at Bethel, the high place made by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. Remember, they always flash back to Jeroboam. He caused this. He did this. Now, really, it, it actually started with Solomon, but Jeroboam was the worst of them. Who caused Israel to sin, even that altar and the high place he demolished. He burnt the high place to the ground and ground it to powder, and burned the Asherah pole also. Then Josiah looked around. In recovery terms, we would say he did a self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. He did an inventory. He made, he cleaned up, did some, made some changes, and then he took inventory, a personal inventory, a fearless moral inventory. So he looked around. And when he saw the tombs that were there on the hillside, he had the bones removed from them and burned on the altar to defile it in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by the man of God who foretold these things. Why are they burning bones on altars? Because this was detestable to the Lord. This was not how things, this is not how idols, idols, altars, 
were to, were treated with a there was a pattern even with Israel we see in the temple we see this pattern of it has to be made of gold and this and only certain people are allowed to touch it and do it and so they they desecrated these idols they crush them burn them but then they also burnt human bones on it because this is actually no matter what the faith or the religion was this was wrong unless it was an altar designed for sacrificing your children um so that's what's happening here just to kind of give you a little context of it uh let's keep going welcome everyone that's here some new names new new faces so good to see you we're trying to help boost involvement with the page so thanks for sticking around thank you for your comments Randy yep Kozlowski sharing a bit of the story there yeah it goes along with this so good good all right, let's keep going. The king asked, what is that tombstone I see? Self-evaluation, he's still evaluating. The people of the city said, it marks the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and pronounced against the altar of Bethel the very things you have done. Leave it alone, he said. Don't let anyone disturb his bones. So they spared his bones and those of the prophet who had come from Samaria. Just as he had done at Bethel, Josiah removed all the shrines at the high places that the kings of Israel had built in the towns of Samaria that had aroused the Lord's anger. Josiah slaughtered all the priests of those high places on the altars and burned human bones on them. Then he went back to Jerusalem. The king gave this order to all the people. Celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God. As it is written in this book of the covenant, neither in the days of the judges who led Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah had any such Passover been observed. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, the Passover, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. They forgot the Passover for so many years. And now it's, he's going, it's time, Passover time healing time, cleanup time. So we see, again, I'm using a lot of recovery terms today because this is not just stop doing bad. It's actually turning and going, start doing good. And we talk about this in recovery. What are you refilling your time with? It's not just Sometimes about... when you're doing so many good things, you don't realize you've stopped doing the bad things. Yes, kind of just forget about it and sometimes if you're so focused on stopping bad don't do that don't do that don't think that don't see that don't say that don't get angry all you're thinking about is that and you're still letting that consume your life so there's a there's a both that takes place we turn from and we turn to god That's this to stop drinking i think it was easier because i just was so busy I was busy doing other good things. Yeah. Just don't even think about it. And Ashley, if you didn't hear, she just said that's how she stopped drinking because it wasn't just stop drinking. It was her life began to fill up with so many good things that she didn't even have time or the desire to drink. Mm -hmm. And so things began to change. And so if you are in addiction, if you're in brokenness and hurts, habits, hangups, not just addiction, but that could be addiction, drugs, alcohol, sex, food, spending, gambling. Um, but if there's things in your life like bitterness, unforgiveness, um, things that are holding you back, mental health issues, if there is um, physical pain, I'm in chronic pain and I'm in, sometimes it's not just about, okay, get through it. And, and I'm, I'm not saying those things are not real. They're just as real as addiction. But you have to deal with them sometimes in a different way. And we start filling our life with good. And this is really what Josiah is doing. Josiah is going, it's time to clean up the land. Because I need the goodness of God to fill Israel again. This might mean for some of you different seasons. There's been seasons where God has told me no, no music no secular music, no radio, because every time I got in the car, the radio, find it, find the song, find the, and there has been literally seasons of a couple years at a time where I just go no radio. And what am I going to do during that time? Not be bored and drive. I begin to pray. 
I began to listen to podcasts. I began to listen to sermons and to, um, and to, uh, you guys love my blue shirt. They think I only own one shirt because I, this is all I wear every time I'm on camera. Um, it just has like 10 of them. Yeah. And so <clears throat> what do you need to clean up? For some of you, this may be, I'll be honest, in our home in the last little while for financial things it's and budget but also for our own our own we're not doing this we've cut cable we cut netflix we got rid of because it, there was nothing we were watching and it wasn't you know there was shows once in a while but it was it we're like why do we have this here let's do an evaluation time to clean up well some of you it might be you know whatever god is speaking to you but there may be things that you go it's time to clean up time to stop buying junk food babe. I'm sorry. when the lord tells me i will absolutely obey um <laughs> you know it could be junk food and for me that's that is an issue um i like to eat junk food a lot and it's it is a problem and i need to go lord help me and there's times where some days i drive and i go yay i didn't stop at the 7-eleven i didn't i that's a win today I did it. I can serve. I got something at home and I have to remind myself. Some of you, it might be the books you read and you love reading and you read books, but God's going, Hey, if you want me to fill you, you need to empty yourself. Some of us, it's video games. I just turned to the video game, video game, video game, playing all the day, all the time. TikTok. TikTok. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And God is saying, Hey, next thing I know, two hours have passed. So you're scrolling in two hours past and God is saying, Hey, it's time. For, and this isn't a, we don't get to point our fingers and no. say, you do this and you do that. And we do a self evaluation with God helping us and say, Lord, what is it in my life that is holding me back from being filled with you? Some of you just had things pop in your mind right there. That's what it is. And it doesn't even mean you have to quit it or stop it completely. But it means we start to empty ourselves and go, you know what? I need to move. I need to be filled with God. Okay. Furthermore, verse 24, Josiah got rid of the mediums and the spiritualists. How are we doing for time? We are over time. How much longer is this? Uh, we'll keep going. We're going to just read it quick. And then we'll get to comments. And then we will get to... Actually, I think we'll just stop. What verse are we on? 24. I think we're going to stop there. We'll finish this chapter tomorrow. And we're going to go to comments right now. Because um, I want to connect with you guys as well. So thank you to those that are here on TikTok. Amy, Odette, Christopher. Thank you guys for being part of this. Always, by the way, Facebook, if you want, we always stick around longer on TikTok and talk. About any subject, anything you want. And it's Bible read along on TikTok. Bible read along official. official is the is the TikTok. You can find all of our social media on BibleReadalong.com website down below. All right, tons and tons of comments. Thank you to those that have stuck around, maybe for the first time, um, for Bible read along. We are going to be tagging everyone for at least a week or two to see if we can engage. And sorry that increase Facebook engagement. Keeps freezing. I am sorry that Facebook keeps freezing. You are connected to the pod, so I don't know what the heck is going on. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, we're trying everything we can. I think it's my computer, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I can't scroll all the way up now. Uh, I can't either. It stops quite a way. It stops okay. at Matthew Baker. So I have J. Rald Loriosa from the Philippines. Welcome. Betty Gates, welcome. Alice, welcome, Randy. I made crypto an idol mm -hmm. and I wasn't even aware of it. And Randy, this is, all of us do this. We all do things that we put it, we make it an idol and we don't even realize mm -hmm. until we go, even what stress. is stress, stress an becomes an idol. Worry becomes an idol. I just worry. Well, I'm just so worried. The news becomes an idol. I have to listen to the news. Well, I got to hear. I got to stay busy. Working out can become an idol. That's what I've heard, um, yeah. You know, like, and some of these things aren't bad. They're not bad things. Investing crypto, if you want. Sure. I don't know enough about it to say yes or no. Um, but investing crypto, you know, exercise, worry, even sometimes 
you know, okay, I need to plan and prepare this, being prepared. Now, when I'm stuck in that worry, that's not healthy either. But some of these things aren't bad things. The issue is, are they the thing that is filling our life more than God? And if they are, something's out of line. And we might need a Josiah moment that says, it's time to clean house. It's time. I need to start attending a recovery meeting. A-A-N-A or Christian Celebrate Recovery. I need to start attending something. I, I fill my time. I just sit at home. I'm alone. And what's filled my time has become loneliness. And I'm alone and I just don't want to go out. I've isolated. No, I need connection. I need church. I'm going to start to connect with one ministry a week a men's group, a women's group, a Bible study, a home group, church service. Um, I'm going to start connecting again. I'm going to start filling my life. So those are great, great um, things there. Yeah, and this is, see, Randy, you said this is this is how I studied the markets 20 hours a day and trying to do diligence. And this is what happens. It eats our time. It eats our energy. It eats and it becomes an idol in our life that it's time to clean house. It is time to clean house. Betty, um, let's Satsi, welcome. Again, if I mispronounce names, Rod, welcome. I thought you were, did you have surgery today? Was that yesterday? We are praying for you. Let me know how things are going. Joshua was better than David and Solomon, yet he died suddenly. Yep. Was Nathan Malek a nice godly man? Um, No, I don't believe so. I'd have to look. You always throw these names at me, Matthew, that were just in the middle and I don't, they don't click for me sometimes. They don't stick. Um, God bless Odette. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome, Trucker J. Sorry, so many comments today. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that you like this. We've been doing this, by the way, for four years. Daily videos. And so if you are on Facebook right now, that's why we're starting to tag everyone. I think it's a newer feature that Facebook has released. And we are taking full advantage of it because we have over almost 5,000 people on our Facebook group. Out of those that actually engage, we probably have 50 to 100. So there's something disconnecting. And then as I'm going through, I've been doing posts that are getting a lot of comments and interaction. I can